Before the 1900s or so, doctors were kind of just taking shots in the dark as to how to cure their patients. Have asthma? Eat a bunch of boiled carrots. Severe fever? Pray to your lord and savior at 2 p.m. on a Thursday. Eye irritation? Cut off the eyes of a crab and rub them on the back of your neck. It will never fail to amaze me the wild cures that medical professionals had back then. But to be fair, they were the ones at the forefront of modernizing medicine. They were the ones just trying to iron out the kinks of how everything actually worked through arduous trial and error. Today, I'm going to share with you five medical treatments that will make you go, oh, that's pretty stupid. And the list starts off pretty strong. Tobacco enemas were all the rage in the 17 and 1800s and were used as a resuscitation method, like almost the exact opposite of CPR today. Back then, tobacco was thought as a sort of cure-all, capable of warming the human body and ridding it of all toxins. There's a story in 1746 about a man who pulled his wife from a body of water. Even though she appeared to have drowned, a passing sailor spotted the troubled couple. Fear not, good sir, said the sailor. I know just the cure. Here, take my pipe. Now, what you're gonna want to do is ever so delicately jam it up your wife's blowhole. Yeah, just right up in there. Then blow like the eastern wind in a galleon sails. The man reluctantly complied, inserted, and blew hard on the pipe. The story has a happy ending because the woman actually managed to survive somehow. Crazy, right? Yeah, I thought whoever wrote the story was just blowing smoke up my ass. Tobacco enemas continued to be popular for treatments of symptoms like headaches or abdominal cramping up until the 1900s when doctors realized that that was a bad idea since tobacco is carcinogenic. Speaking of headaches, they've existed for long as humans have had heads, which is to say a long while. If you've ever had a pounding headache, you probably wish you could just open up a hole in your skull to relieve the pain. Well, guess what our ancestors used to do? Yeah, there was a process called trepanation, which is actually the world's oldest known form of surgery, dating back some 6,000 years ago during the Neolithic era, the last part of the Stone Age. This procedure was typically performed on individuals who had symptoms ranging from headaches, head injuries, seizures, mental illness, really anything to do with your noggin. Not only were the holes believed to relieve head pressure, but to also release evil spirits crammed in there. So imagine Dr. Unga and Nurse Bunga delicately whacking at your melon with a rock because you decided to be extra silly that day. Speaking of silly, let's talk about an Italian chemist named Angelo Mariani. At the age of 25, he developed a miracle elixir that would aid in the curing of rather minute symptoms such as exhaustion, tummy aches, depression, and anxiety. By simply mixing a bold and flavorful Bordeaux wine with equally bold cocaine, you too can be fit as a fiddle. The drink became so popular in France that it was marketed overseas in the United States, where it inspired John Pemberton to put his own spin on the wine mixture. That is until the United States banned alcohol. But Johnny Boy wouldn't give up so easily. He created a carbonated alcohol-free alternative, which still possessed the full coke power. Speaking of putting your own spin on something, our next treatment does just that. Looking like a rejected nightmarish amusement park thrill ride, we have the whirling chair. The method behind this absolute unit of a contraption in the 1800s was to treat patients with mental illnesses like schizophrenia by completely scrambling their fucking brains into soup. Patients were strapped into the chair where an operator would then begin rotating it on a very tight axis, spinning faster and faster until the patient completely passed out. Which is beneficial because you can't be crazy while unconscious. Of course, losing consciousness in that fashion is due to the brain not getting enough oxygenated blood, which in fact will cause more brain damage. But hey, at least it looked kind of fun. Speaking of having fun, our last treatment requires me to address my male audience, which is probably most of you. Have you ever had difficulty performing for your partner? Can't quite satisfy that significant other in your life? Can't produce an offspring to call your own? Boy, do I have the remedy for you. Introducing goat nads. Yeah, they're just a goat's balls, but they could be your balls. Have you ever watched a goat fuck? I haven't, but I bet they would perform better than you, dork. This is probably the type of sales pitch that John Brinkley gave to his patients in the early 1900s. The man was a self-proclaimed doctor whose claim to fame was replacing vulnerable men's vulnerables with goat nuts. His process was not well defined and was often improvised on the spot, just Kobeing some goaty gonads into a patient's newly emptied sack. Sometimes he would replace them, but sometimes he might even just place the goat balls in there next to the current ones and call it a day. He had over 40 patients die on his table or from infection shortly after. 
Those who did survive experienced a placebo effect because no work had actually been done on their existing dangly bits. Those were the lucky ones. John Brinkley ended up making millions on the fraudulent procedure over two decades, but he claimed he was doing the impotent men a favor. You can also do me a favor by doing the thing and the stuff. So yeah, there's five medical treatments that were just plain bonkers. At least doctors are much better today and can more reliably save your life, only to put you in debt for the rest of it. 